so check it out we have a giant box of reptiles here now we're gonna get to that a little bit later but let me tell you something first I just don't want you to get confused that your life isn't good enough because you're not able to acquire animals or you're not able to get new species or you're unhappy because this person has this and that person has that it's not about acquiring the most things it's about being grateful with what you have so these are from the same guy that I got a few snakes from in the past his name is Mike Kosicki I will put his email down below so as you can see here Mike actually included some feeding cards which are going to be super helpful to us and it's something that I wish I could do more of but quite frankly just the amount of babies that we produce I only keep track for the first couple weeks until the corns are getting ready and feeding but it's definitely something that I'm interested in and and record keeping is something that is probably underrated and underappreciated when it comes to breeding snakes all right so this is our first one and you guys have seen Slowinski corn snakes before because I already have a female and Mike was nice enough to give me a male to go to the female so this is really awesome and it completes my pair and I'm really excited about it because this is one of my favorite corn snakes. What is a Slowinski's corn snake? Well, they basically inhabit the border of Texas and Louisiana. They were thought at first to be a natural hybridization between the Emery's rat snake or the Great Plains rat snake it's also called and the corn snake but further genetic study found these to be therefore this is Pantherophis slowinskii named after the famous herpetologist who actually taught for a long time in Louisiana around where these guys are found and therefore was named in his honor after he died from a crate bite in 2001 and this is just an amazing, amazing snake. I love this species and I can't wait to produce them in the future. Obviously, we've probably got two more years or so behind it, but just an awesome snake to work with and I'm glad to have a male finally. And just like my female, this guy is also head silver leaf, which is an awesome mutation in these guys. So it seems like this one is a male, so I need to make sure I keep that straight. And so this is, I previously had a female Eastern Black King Snake, which is Lampropeltis nigra. And they are called Black King Snakes, or Eastern Black King Snakes, you may see them. It just depends. So you guys may know that I have a female Lampropeltis nigra, or the Black King Snake, or Eastern Black King Snake. This is not a Mexican black king snake, it is different species that is from the US here and they're very very beautiful. So this one says male, let's see. And there aren't going to be completely black like you see Mexican black king snakes. But these individuals are very very attractive and pretty close to it. So as you can see, this here is certainly a black king snake. The difference is obviously the white on the belly here. So this is the Eastern black king. The Mexican black king snake actually has a black and purplish belly, but these guys are typically pretty solid black on the tops, but their sides as well as the belly pattern will show some white speckling and uh, on the belly pattern, it's almost like a corn snake. The maze look to it, but what an amazing snake. I'm so excited. I've never even held an adult or seen one in person. So this is awesome. Now let's see what else we have. That is our one male. This girl seems about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller here. Let's see. What's up, girl? Oh, look at that. This here is another Nigra or Lampropeltis Nigra. Look at that belly pattern. What an amazing snake. I am super, super pumped about this. After keeping my female for a very short time, this quickly became one of the favorite species that I own. So of course I had to get more of them. And as you can see, these guys are very chill. And I'm not sure if it's just because they're cold or that's their natural behavior. The other one that I have is very chill as well. So at least from this trio that I see, the male is a bit larger than the female. And the females are very, very manageable size. Obviously could fit 
pretty much in the palm of my hand, which you can't say about my, many adult female snakes. Let's see if I can get it open though. That may be something totally different. Here you go. Man, I am excited to work with these guys. If I produce them this year, it'd be very, very far-fetched, but I'd be very excited to do it. After shipping an animal during the breeding season, I mean, this is ideally when the animals would already be laying eggs. So that's why it's not an opportune time to breed them. And I don't think my chances are gonna be great, but it's worth a shot as long as I can get them feeding and get them ready to go beforehand and make sure we don't rush anything too fast and risk anything happening, which I don't foresee there being an issue. But bam, there you go. Come on, girl. She's stuck in there. And there is our last female. What an amazing snake. And I don't know if she's as happy as the other ones, but she'll get used to us. So much like the other ones, it does as well have this white belly, which to me, I love the look of. I don't need my snakes to be solid black, but this is close enough for me, that's for sure. So I want to talk about a little bit what's been on my mind as far as there are a lot of YouTubers, pet tubers, whatever they call themselves, whatever I call myself, I do not know. But you see us unboxing things, you see us acquiring new animals, you see us doing all these things with our animals, and yes, it is very fun and it's amazing, but keep in mind, getting an animal, acquiring a new animal, it doesn't make me any happier. It doesn't make anyone any happier. It's a momentary bliss. It's I'm excited to work with the animals and everything, but at the end of the day, these aren't anything to be collected. They're not really trading cards, stuff like that. This animal will have a purpose in my collection. I will do my best to do everything for the animal, but it's not about acquiring the most animals and doing that. So I just want to let you guys know that Although I'm happy right now, this does not change my life and there's still things that I need to get right in order to make myself happy and it doesn't have to do with acquiring anything, it doesn't have to do with money, it doesn't have to do with snakes, it doesn't have anything to do with that. So I just don't want you to get confused that your life isn't good enough because you're not able to acquire animals or you're not able to get new species or you're unhappy because this person has this and that person has that. It's not about acquiring the most things. It's about being grateful with what you have. And therefore, I am grateful for every single animal I have. I'm grateful for living in a house. I'm grateful for having a roof over my head and food and everything like that. Those are the things that you need. The animals are just kind of the icing on top. So I want to make sure that I'm not perpetuating the idea that you need to acquire animals to become happy because that is not how it works. I think I've tried that and it hasn't worked. So. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed these Eastern Black King Snakes. Hopefully, unless you're, if you're new to my videos, hopefully you've never seen this species before and you didn't know it existed and now you're pumped that you realize that it may be a good alternative to other king snakes that you may have in mind and they're awesome, awesome species. Very, very chill animals. As you can see, they don't get too large. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you are certainly on the team. Man, Nigra, look at him, look at her go. She's a little cold, she's not moving very fast, but thank you guys so much for watching.